I'm here in sunny Melbourne, Florida. No, I'm not. I'm actually still here in Los Angeles, but I'm interviewing Dr. Liz White on episode two of Conversations with Dr. Gosalia. Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the Conversations with Dr. Gosalia. I'm here with the Dr. Liz White. That's correct, Dr. Liz White. And if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the subscribe button down below. And there's even a bell that you can click on to give yourself some updates whenever there's a new video. So uh, Dr. White, I want to jump right in. So you're a runner and you really enjoy running. I see your pictures all the time, all over the uh, uh, Facebook and other social media posts about running. Why do you enjoy running so much? I enjoy running because it's my social outlet. That's the time I have because there's no other time to enjoy myself. Maybe in the evenings I enjoy myself out with friends, but I get to exercise and I get to have girlfriend time and I get to vent and I get to chat and I get to find out great things about what my friends are doing. And so that's, that's one of the reasons I love it. Now you're, you have, um, you're married and you have three beautiful kids. I've seen their pictures online and I'll, uh, here's a picture of them right here. Do you get them to run with you? So I would love to say yes. Um, they won't train with me. They won't, uh, you know, go out and have a run around the neighborhood. No, but if I can, if I sign them up for a race, well, we paid for it. You're going you're gonna to run that race. And just last week, there's a, a race in town that's called the Corporate 5K, and you have to sign up as a company. And since I'm a company, I signed up my only employee, myself, and my four little employees, my three kids and my husband. <laughs> That's a, that's a good way to get them involved. Yeah. Uh, do do they enjoy running? So they say they don't. However, they like the they like that carrot. They like that medal at the end. They want to beat each other. So um, they say, Ugh, I don't like it. But I I'm trying to you know use some coercive methods to convince them that they do like it because they have some potential. Do they? Is it more the distance that they don't like, or is it just the activity of actually physically doing something? the activity and the physically doing something. Now they play basketball and they play soccer and, but it's that running and there's not much else going on, but if there's competition, that's, that's it. Almost like the, uh, the odd lifestyle 10 K that you guys ran, uh, yeah. just last month in Columbus. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't want to go into that. So tell us about your upbringing and, uh, you know, how did you get into audiology of all professions? Okay. So I, um, I was the first person in my family and my extended family to go to college. I didn't know anybody in my family. No one went, everybody was kind of blue collar and, um, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have any kind of role models. And so unfortunately my father, when I was a senior in high school, had a stroke mm. and his speech, he had aphasia. So my mom said, well, this speech has really helped dad a lot. Why don't you think about speech therapy? Okay, sure. So I thought about speech therapy. I got accepted to the University of Florida, go Gators, and signed up to communication sciences and disorders. And that was a good 22 years ago. And wow. Yeah. 25. <laughs> good. Um, so the um, first semester, intro to communication sciences and disorders, whatever the class was called, I learned about audiology. And the, the doctorate of audiology degree was pretty new, just a couple of years old back in 1997. So I, they mentioned that and I thought, well, that sounds like something. Not knowing a darn thing about audiology, I just made that switch and never looked back. And um, I'm glad because I would not want to be the best speech therapist there, there could be. Yeah. Uh, after you graduated and you mm -hmm. said, uh, you started in 97, you said? Yes. So probably what, uh, 2001 did you graduate? Well, I did it in three and a half years. So oh, yeah. Overachiever. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so three and a half years. Uh, and then after you graduated, you actually uh, uh, joined the uh, uh, Cochlear and the Cochlear Americas. Well, and you, I, didn't yeah. graduate, I didn't graduate the University of Louisville until 2005. Oh, excuse me. That's right. Yeah, yeah we had another few years in there. That's schooling. Forgot that's about that. Yep. Yeah. So after that, 
Then you graduated and joined Cochlear Americas. Mm -hmm. And then you joined a few other places. So tell us about your you know, journey to where uh, you are now. Yeah. yeah, so I think that, um, you know, I've worked in a lot of places. I worked at Cochlear, so I worked on the industry side. I worked in the school audiology, the education side. I've been in the VA, so I've been on the government side. I've been in the um, medical clinic side. And all of those places have created who I am. Like, if I didn't have some of those experiences, especially at the VA, my God, the amount that you learn there because of the sheer number of patients is so amazing. Um, I loved the implantable side. At some point, I hope I can get back to the implantable part and help that type of patient population because, unfortunately, there's not that many clinics especially locally, that do anything with the implantables. Um, so, yeah, so I had all these experiences, which then finally led me to where I am today. And hold that thought, because I'm going to come back to where you are now. But okay. most recently, in fact, the, the first time I actually uh, met you virtually, if you will, on Facebook, you were actually working in a medical group. And, you know, we won't, I won't name them. If you want to name them, it's up to you. But the, the medical group you were working at, um, would not let you call yourself doctor, which is, you know, pretty outrageous and unbelievable. But it was quite disrespectful. And, you know, you fought them quite a bit. And you reached out to a, a few of us, not just me, but a few of us. And then I, I think we gave you good advice. And I, and I think you're doing really well. So uh, it sounds like it turned out okay. However, you made this baller move. I mean, uh, unbelievable move, a big jump. I mean, very scary, I'm sure, uh, where you told them if you can't use your correct title, you basically left and you quit your job mainly because of that. I know there may have been a couple other things, but I mean, that's pretty scary. I mean, that's a pretty scary move. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I graduated in 2005 and I started with this company 10 years later. I had been using my title of Dr. White for 10 years, never had anybody say anything to me. Um, so fast forward a year and the secretaries and the front desk staff kept calling me Liz in front of patients. And I thought that's not really right. Like the patient knows me as Dr. White. And you're saying, Liz, when do you want him to come back? When do you want to see Liz? No. So we sent a letter um, to our front desk in the email, and that got forwarded up the chain all the way to legal. And legal came back and said, no, no, no. Only the medical doctors and the doctors of osteopathy can use that title because mm -hmm. it's going to confuse the patients. Now, that was December of 2016. I came out of that meeting. I started packing my, my, all my textbooks that were in that office. Unfortunately, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to go out on my own. I had planned a private practice that I wanted to do back in June of 16 because I wasn't happy there. But we had just sold our house. I hadn't found a new house. We had no collateral. So you can't take out a loan if you got nothing behind you besides a rental house. So started getting my ducks in a line and it took about a year and a half to do that. We found our dream house and um, I hired a lawyer, asked him like, is this right? And he said, they can tell you tomorrow you need to start going by Bob and you're going to go by Bob because they are a private organization. So um, from that day, though, I was supposed to say, hi, I'm Liz White and I have my doctorate in audiology and let me tell you what that means. No, there's no time for that in a patient uh, consultation. I still call myself Dr. White every single day because they're not going to tell me and they're not going to try to take my degree away from me. Fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I had so much support from these people I didn't even know because I got fired up and I went to our Facebook groups and the people, you, Amit, and oh God, everybody was just behind me. And um, so I came back from AAA uh, 2018, where, where we, we were in Indianapolis, and um, they weren't expecting it. And I walked in with a paper and had to give 90 days notice, though. So that was a bit rough that you had to do that and then still go to work for 90 more days, but um, I cannot be happier with my decision because you can't do that. You just can't treat people that way. Right. And you went on on your own and you started this new practice. It's called Harbor City Hearing Solutions. Harbor City Hearing Solutions. Uh, I'll put a link to your website and of course, all the social media tags in the descriptions. Uh, so you started this ground up yeah. in Melbourne, Florida, correct? Yes. Uh, how did that, how did that go? How did that startup go? So it, I, I planned for it to be so slow. Um, I got my loan in November. I got my equipment in November. I saw a patient or two in December and, um, January was great. People are people who knew I was leaving where I was back in July. They waited six months to come see me 
and to, to do something about treatment for their hearing loss. And so that made me feel so great. And, you know, people are calling me. It's, it's so wonderful. Someone just found me. She said, I opened up the newspaper and I never read the newspaper. And it was like, oh, there's Liz White. I couldn't believe I found her. I actually went and saw her in her nursing facility yesterday. So um, it's just been, it's been a blessing. It's stressful as hell. Um, but I am so happy to work for myself. I'm so happy to do the things the way that they should be done and best practices and the whole shebang and not be limited and not be micromanaged. And I can spend two hours with a patient if I want to, because it's my time. Yeah. And, you know, growing from ground up, going green like that, you never know who's going to come in your door that first day. Cause you know, there could be nobody for like a year and that, yeah. that's, it's a very scary proposition. So you, you've obviously you've made an impact on people's lives that they recognized you. And uh, I'm sure she said Dr. Liz White, not just Liz White, but I'm, I'm sure oh. that's I'm sure that was just a semantic error there. What should I call you? And you know, we're friends now. She's 86 years old. And so we're, we're talking, so I'm letting her call me Liz. <laughs> I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> what do you see your practice in five years? Oh, so I am um, I am currently just subleasing two little executive suites. I mean, my office is tiny. A patient came in and he's like, this is tight. And I'm like, great, it should be tight. I didn't want to take out a loan for, I want to have a build out at some point. So in five years, I hope I have my own building. And I want to have, I don't know if I want to have any other audiologists working for me. Sometimes I don't really play well with others. I want people to, um, I, I, I have high standards and I don't want someone who doesn't have high standards. I'd love to have an audiology assistant at some point. Um, right now I'm doing it all, um, which is okay, but it, it's going to grow and I'm going to need some help. Sure. And you know, that, that knowledge or that awareness that you need help is so important, especially in a, in a ground up practice where you don't know what you don't know. You don't know. Oh my God. I say that every day. <laughs> <laughs> I say to patients about them and their hearing loss, but I say it to myself, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. All right. So do you have any advice for, let's say, a young audiologist or a student who's considering going into private practice? I do. I think, I kind of think the way that I did it, and I'm not the epitome of everything, but you've got to experience the good and the ugly. I luckily had experiences in industry and the VA and school side and the private side and the clinic and the ENT clinic side. And so I got to see the best and the worst of people and of audiology and of the whole, the whole shebang. And I think, I think you need to have those experiences to make yourself a better audiologist. Absolutely. Well, just a Absolutely. lot about yourself. Uh, tell us the three things that we don't already know about you. Okay, so um, this gets mentioned in a lot of these ice-breaking networking events, and I don't like nickels, and I don't have a good reason why I don't like nickels. Is it because of the weight? I don't know. I also don't like $5 bills. Um, I prefer a $10 bill or maybe higher denominations. Yeah, we all like $100 bills. $100 bills would be great. The second thing about me is I'm a wuss when it comes to pool temperature. <laughs> I don't go in a pool unless it's above 89, 90 degrees, so I don't even put my feet in. I just sit there with here with um sunscreen on though because I am a skin uh, skin cancer survivor as well. And okay. the thing is, I am not any kind of singer at all. But I was talking to Dr. DeSogra at um, AAA in Columbus, and I said, I think I want to sing the national anthem. So I have to email him. But that's it. You're going to see me in New Orleans singing the national anthem. I think it would be really great. So so you don't like nickels and you live in Florida and you're worried about pool temperature and you don't, you're not a singer and you want, you're going to sing the national anthem. Awesome. I love it. Why not? Absolutely. Overcome your, uh, any, any fears that you have, right? Yeah. Maybe I'll jump in an 88 degree pool someday too. Oh my gosh. Definitely uh, shoot a video and let us see that. Cause I think we'd all enjoy watching you freak out as you hit the water. Probably. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for doing this. I know you've got a busy day ahead of you. Um, I know that we've got an event to go to as well. So, uh, any plans for the day? Well, in fact, there are some plans. I'm actually headed to the pool where I probably will not be getting in, but I will maybe have a, a glass, of, glass of wine and watch my children swim. Perfect. Liz White, uh, Dr. Liz White, excuse me, Dr. Liz White, thank you so much for your time and uh, sharing your experiences with us. 
and good luck to you and your practice. And we're very confident you're going to do very well. So thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Bye.